source level. And level, and then you can, so right now we're at 500 millivolts RMS excitation. You can change that to one. You want to see what's going to happen when we change when we increase the voltage? Change it, change it, change it. We're going to want one volt. It got softer. It, the resonance frequency changed. Did you see it? And then if you decrease 5 millivolts, the resonance frequency is like all the way down here. Uh, so essentially, this okay? I'm changing the voltage excitation. Oh. So when you excite with a larger voltage, what happens? More vibration. More vibration sort of high power ish properties. So when you get when you increase the vibration level, generally the material property reaction is that the compliance increases, which means the stiffness decreases, which means it gets softer, which means the resonance frequency gets lower. And it becomes a more lossy material. So the Q decreases, the losses increase, uh, everything shifts over. Everything shifts over this way. This way when you increase the voltage. So the standard practice is to use 0.5 volts but it's not actually, but in this case, the resonance at, at free, the, the, the frequency of resonance is much more affected because there's a lot of vibration at resonance for a given voltage value. But at anti-resonance, the, the vibration is still small. What's the difference between 0.5 volts and, and one volt for anti-resonance, or five milli, what's the difference between five millivolts and like you know, one volt at uh, anti-resonance doesn't make a large difference in the uh, vibration level. So, okay, no, never mind. Maybe you'll learn later, but basically the change in voltage uh, doesn't change the anti-resonance uh, that position that much. That's why we use change in vibration velocity where we can equally compare resonance and anti-resonance. So, but this is this is a standard standard equipment that we use, but this is the fault of this material, this, this, the, the fault of using an impedance analyzer to calculate properties of, uh, of a piezoelectric element is because at resonance and anti-resonance, the current is, is very different, or the, you could say the vibration is very different. So, uh, but in the vibration from our experiments and stuff, um, the properties are better characterized with edge tip vibration. But we can't do that with this because it's constant voltage. To do that with this, you would need a constant current, constant voltage source at re uh, anti-resonance. And if you use a constant current source, you get a, a constant vibration velocity at uh, resonance. So there, as, a, as a mentioning, there's some limitations in this, but it's a very standard equipment. And uh, if you want to report material properties in a very standard way, that this is the uh, this is the upper, this is the method to do it. And also to give you values that you know will be uh, reasonable. Some things you may measure in the lab, they may be completely off. The way you check it is you look at the reasonable values that you'll get from this uh, uh, device. You know, this device. For example, you can measure the quality effect of resonance. If you find this to be 1000 and you find your material to be 200 just at a low excitation, then you're going to see there's a big problem there. Something's wrong with my circuit or I'm doing some calculation incorrectly or this is a very good reference device and uh, I don't like this this is not, I don't like that you can also do for example you know how we have in lab like this thing I'm sure you've seen it you have this basically it has smaller electrodes here it's smaller holders here so it's less likely to impede see this is a pretty big pretty big big thing right here uh, if you look at it it's pretty flat it's pretty fat so it doesn't really go work. I mean because it's so big, it, it's the samples. It's gonna clamp the sample, sort of. And, and you don't want to clamp the sample. You want to hold the sample. Because the whole point of holding in the center, so you don't distract the vibration. So if you sort of expand that area, you're sort of defeating the purpose. So what you can actually do: take two little wires like this, stick them in here. Take two alligator clips, hook them, hook them to these. Then do your, then do your compensation. When you add this big, big circuit at the end of it then the compensation will be more important to do. And here, this sample, it's, these two things, it's not so important to do the compensation. But if you have like some wires popping out and, and hooking up to a different sample holder, uh, and because you want to use our sample holder, which doesn't, which won't, which will hold the sample in a smaller surface area, then this will be, this will be good. Then, then using wires and compensating, and uh, that'll give you some reasonable results. Yeah. Uh, and maybe easier, and you can just put it on top, and measure it or, or this for you know, example we could put this out and yeah this one has all these ports on it our, our the sample hole that we use in our lab is not meant for this 
but you can you can just attach whatever you want to the end of it as long as you have well, as long as you compensate the circuit you know a short circuit compensation open circuit compensation if you have a large circuit at the end it's more important to compensate um, it's i don't think it's as important but if you want to do it you know super accurate or whatever uh and have the best practices you would say okay your sample is about one millimeter thick you would adjust this to one millimeter and then clamp it uh, then turn the knob and then you would do your open circuit calibration because this is actually what the open circuit means it means everything but the sample so this thickness you know because because uh because because air has some permittivity in it you know air has a permittivity which is equal to one times the permittivity of free space so the air has some effect on it this gap has some effect so this is probably not necessary for us because uh, our, our permittivity is over a thousand so kind of not really make any difference but it may make some difference so usually we don't measure it out carefully you can just do it like that just clamp it like this and then for short circuit obviously you want to short it you want to just clamp it you want to have it shorted like this because wires have inductance on them if you take it, if i just hooked up one wire from here to here and i cranked up the frequency of one megahertz you'll see some resist you'll see some imp impedance where you're like this is a wire why does it have impedance because at a high frequency the wire is like acting like a uh, acting like an inductor because this is a small coil like it's not really a coil you would say this is a this is a, a wire but that's what that's what it does mm -hmm. so to account for these things our, our samples are not so extreme that we have to think about all these factors because you measure under well under one megahertz and uh, it's important to look at your sample look at the impedance value see if everything's matching up properly and uh, it would be sort of a good idea to sort of do a measurement using this just to see if your measure if you see if your material properties are sort of correct without having all this all this external calibration and trying to figure out so 